Thank you very much. So the good news is, as a previous prophylaxis to my presentation, the, I, I, my goal is to make this presentation the shortest in the symposium. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so many of you are aware about uh, taking a contraceptive pill to prevent pregnancy. The same concept here, you take antiretrovirals to prevent HIV. So that is called pre-exposure prophylaxis. And the only approved formulation for PrEP is the oral version, even though there are like topical and injectables which may be approved in the future. And PrEP, if taken uh, as advised, it is highly effective. Many systematic uh, reviews as well as uh, several demonstration projects, they have shown that uh, uh, it is nearly like, there is a reduction of uh, more than 90% uh, uh, risk of uh, getting HIV. WHO has released several guidelines. The key guideline is the September 2015 guideline. And uh, recently this year, it also re uh, released a guideline on event-driven PrEP, which is recommended only for MSM. Uh, but WHO also very clearly says that it is the choice of the individual. So even though it is a public health guideline, people all, uh, WHO also clearly says that if a person feels the per he or she is at risk and comes to you and asks for PrEP, we should be able to provide that. And also we should not be forcing the people to take PrEP just because they belong to a particular marginalized community. WHO has also released several implementation tools uh, for counselors, doctors, peer educators like that. And very briefly, uh, it indicates uh, uh, oral PrEP for anyone who is at what the WHO calls as substantial risk, and it also provides a definition of what is like substantial risk. And these are the drugs which are approved for uh, the PrEP. Uh, uh, tenofovir, tenofovir with uh, mcitabine, tenofovir with lamivudin. Even though there is a new formulation, uh, tenofovir alfanamide with uh, mcitabine, this, is, this has not been included in uh, WHO guidelines yet. And uh, uh, for anyone, the daily PrEP is recommended. Only for MSM, the event-driven PrEP is uh, recommended. Okay, in 2016, uh, the the Drugs Controller General of India approved generic version of uh, tenofovir and mcitabine. And uh, as some of you may know, like many private physicians, they are prescribing PrEP, especially in Mumbai, even in Chennai, where I am from. And it is also available over the counter, and also people can purchase it online. And uh, the, on the right, on, the, on this side, left side, you can see in the gay apps, they have also included an option that I can say whether I am negative, negative on with PrEP, positive, positive and undetectable. So many MSM, they are now actually aware about the PrEP because of these gay apps. So uh, nearly uh, more than 35 countries have some kind of policy on PrEP. They have mainly adapted WHO policy, uh, but India is not one of them. So last year, uh, up to that data, like I think uh, 0.4 million PrEP users were there in nearly, I think, uh, 68 countries. And India, if you can see, it mentions like it falls within the range of 500 to 1,500 PrEP users. They're actually referring to the PrEP demonstration project users. That is a female sex workers demonstration project. Uh, I think that is the number the AVAC is referring to. There are several empirical studies on uh, PrEP in India. I think one from the uh, demonstration project among female sex workers two studies on acceptability uh, by me and my team, and one co from community preparedness by Alliance, and then from Viraj, uh, one again on uh, online users. Uh, and there's also a mathematical modeling on PrEP, which have effectively, it has said that uh, PrEP is effective, if it cost effective. That is the main message from that mathematical modeling. So I will not have time to go through in detail, but if you can look at some of the concerns expressed by MSM and trans women uh, in, uh, in relation to PrEP uptake, people were of course worried about the side effects. They thought like if I take antiretrovirals, other people may think I'm actually HIV positive. And there is also PrEP related stigma from one's own community, like other MSM and trans women, they may think I'm taking PrEP because then I'm 
more engaging in sex a lot, that kind of stigma. And I think there was one question raised in the morning on interactions between uh, hormones and PrEP. That was also a concern. Very briefly put, uh, currently there are two studies this year which have shown that hormones can actually decrease the efficacy of PrEP. Uh, but uh, you need not change the dose. Until now, the guidelines are like, you need not change the dose. Only in event-driven PrEP, you should not be actually, uh, you, you should be able to uh, increase the, uh, the dose of the PrEP, actually. So the guidelines are not yet announced, but these are like just preliminary evidence which is coming from just published like uh, this year. Of course, uh, one of the quantitative studies which I conducted, just briefly, uh, the main point, it's, uh, it's what is called discrete choice experiment. We asked the people to select, for example, whether they would prefer intermittent prep or daily prep, whether they would prefer a no-cost prep or subsidized prep like that. So basically, the key finding, which is in the blue, is uh, uh, nearly 88% they said like they would definitely use prep, and people and we found that higher odds of choosing intermittent PrEP regimen over the daily regimen, and people obviously preferred uh, PrEP with uh, no side effects versus uh, PrEP with minor side effects. This doesn't mean like, uh, uh, like of course, uh, any drug can, can side effects, but here the main thing is the physicians should be able to tell these are the side effects which they are likely to experience in the beginning especially, so that the people can then take uh, like informed decisions about taking PrEP. Of course, the this PrEP demonstration project among female sex workers uh, now is over. So nearly, I think, 1,300 people uh, were part of this uh, demonstration project uh, from uh, uh, DMSC and also from Asadia. And you can see the m m key findings. Um, there was a very good adherence level, and nearly, I think, 85% uh, they were willing to continue PrEP if it is available in a subsidized cast. Something like, I think, uh, about uh, 10 rupees per day. That was the number which was put. There is one PrEP demo project among MSM and trans women which is planned you now, it is in preparatory phase. Uh, ICMR is funding this and uh, NARI in Pune is going to implement this in both Pune as well as in Jalandhar in collaboration with uh, India HIV AIDS Alliance. And uh, uh, Dr. Sunil who spoke in the morning, he's the head of this Accelerate project. This is, uh, these are the points which actually he told me that what, what they are going to cover uh, in relation to PrEP. Uh, the Accelerate project would assist NACO in preparing uh, technical and operational guidelines and will prepare an online certificate course for providers. And they will develop e-literacy materials and they will also, through a platform, online platform, will link potential PrEP users with uh, providers. And they are planning to roll out uh, public sector models of uh, PrEP in collaboration with NACO. And this is the last slide. I would like to conclude with the recommendations from the ESPET group meeting on PrEP, which happened in January this year. So the, the key, very important thing is about developing a national PrEP policy, developing communication strategy and materials, and adapting the WHO tools, which are to the Indian context, and provider training, and developing um, SOPs, standard operating procedures, and also testing and scaling up different models of PrEP delivery to public hospitals, to community-based organizations like that. I would like to conclude that uh, PrEP is not a magic bullet. Uh, along with PrEP, obviously, uh, WHO also emphasizes combination of prevention. Uh, that we should also provide attention to psychosocial intervention and structural intervention so that ultimately a combination of, of this can actually lead to ending the AIDS in 2030. Thank you very much.